Special counsel John Durham has completed a report on what led to the investigation into the Trump campaign's relationship with Russia during the 2016 presidential election. Durham was appointed by then Attorney General Bill Barr after special counsel Robert Mueller's inquiry ended in 2020. Mueller did not find enough evidence of conspiracy to charge members of the Trump team. CBS News senior producer Robert Laguerre joins us now on the phone. Uh, Robert, tell us what we know out of this report this minute. Hey, uh, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. So uh, this 306-page report from Special Counsel John Durham is the culmination of a four-year investigation that started when he was U.S. attorney in Connecticut. Now, in 2019, almost four years ago today, so on May 13, 2019, uh, Attorney General Bill Barr, Donald Trump's attorney general at the time, appointed Special Counsel John Durham uh, to evaluate the origins of the Trump-Russia investigation after allegations that there was impropriety at the start of that investigation. So we want to take our viewers back even before the Mueller investigation to what was known as Crossfire Hurricane, which was an investigation opened by the FBI into four associates of then, um, then uh, presidential candidate Donald Trump in, uh, leading up to the 2016 uh, election. Now, John Durham then became special counsel in 2020 and continued to this investigation, delivered his report to the attorney general on Friday. The attorney general, Merrick Garland, gave that report to Congress today and has now been released to us. And what we're learning, according to Durham, is that he found that initial investigation, Crossfire Hurricane, was not properly opened. The investigation, according to Durham, was opened based on faulty information that should not have been, that, that was not corroborated, not evaluated properly, and should not have been the sole basis to open an investigation into the Trump campaign. Now, as we're pouring through this, I want to caution the viewers as well that this is 300 pages. I'm still going through. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, I do not have all of the context here, but what I can tell you is that um, the Durham investigation does, and the Durham report, does fault the FBI with a lot of, um, uh, you know, misgivings and uh, lack of due diligence and how he puts it rigor um, when it opened that investigation. Now, it is important to point out uh, that the FBI did release a statement in which they said that they have implemented numerous reforms to these processes and that had those been in place at the beginning, these missteps would not have been uh, taken place. Uh, so is this an acknowledgement from the FBI? When did this statement come out? This is after this new report? Or yes, are you yes. Talking so about? the okay. FBI just released this statement. Yes, that's right. So, I mean, it's not a really acknowledgement as much as it's saying, you know, we have this information, we have taken under advisement, but even before this statement came out, these uh, these uh, reforms were put into place in uh, previous years, in 2020. So is so the accusation, is, is the accusation, sorry to interrupt you here, Robert, no just to, to contextualize this, is, is the finding of the report suggesting that perhaps the FBI used different standards when dealing with the different candidates? I mean, what is the, the kind of uh, conclusion that, pe that you foresee people deriving from the uh, publishing of this report? Sure. Right. So I, I think there are a few. So first, that the FBI uh, was, uh, certain officials at the FBI, according to Durham, were predisposed to open an investigation into, into then-candidate Trump. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll all remember uh, Peter Strzok, who was um, an official in the counterintelligence division at the FBI, um, as well as other officials, including, according to Durham, all the way up to the deputy director, Andy McCabe. They, there was, um, according to the report, a predisposition um, for these officials to open an investigation into Trump and not apply similar standards, how he puts it, measured standards into place um, when opening that investigation. Um, and so, yeah, exactly how you're what you're saying, that there was a difference um, in the uh, standards by which they went about opening that investigation. Now, does this come as a surprise, given that this you know investigation is launched uh, by a, a Trump? Well, it, it starts during the Trump investigation. There are Trump appointees. Are you surprised by its conclusion, or is this something we expected all along to result in this? You know, um, it's much uh, smarter people than me would say whether or not they're surprised by this, but I would tell you that um, it is— um, we, a lot of these, this information was available in the Inspector General report that came out a few years ago. So every federal department in the executive branch has an Office of Inspector General mm -hmm. who goes and evaluates the conduct of the department they oversee. The Office of the Inspector General of the Department of Justice looked over a lot of this conduct already and found that there were um, missteps in the investigation and people did not uh, act up to the highest standards of the FBI throughout the entire crossfire uh, hurricane uh, process. That said, 
the Office of the Inspector General found that they did that there was no bias that went into uh, opening the investigation into mm. Trump. What uh, Durham is saying here is that there was, at a minimum, he says, a tendency to want to open an investigation into Trump. Um, and so there is a bit of a difference there. And I think that's just important to point out, particularly because when that Inspector General report came out, Durham actually released a statement of his own um, a few years ago refuting that finding and saying, you know, wait till our report comes out. Ah. And so here we are a few years later, um, and uh, we're pouring through it as we speak. So as reports go, there generally tends to be some form of recommendation. Is there a recommendation moving forward from what you've read? Again, so it's 300 pages. We know that we're just having you jump in. Right. No, but no, do no, you yeah. gather any recommendation? No. So there are certain recommendations that uh, the special counsel suggests. Now, he says a lot of these – a lot of the um, – missteps and the mistakes that he says were made could have been avoided if the FBI simply, as he puts it, lived up to its measured approach to investigations. And so, um, you know, it's important to point out there that that he says that there were um, different safeguards in place already that were just kind of, um, I wouldn't say disregarded, but, you know, potentially minimized as this investigation went on. Now, again, I do think it's important to, again, point out that the FBI says um, that um, I'll just quote from the statement, the conduct in 2016 and 2017 that Special Counsel Durham examined was the reason that current FBI leadership already implemented dozens of corrective actions, mm -hmm. which have now been in place for some time. Um, and so um, then they say, had those reforms been in place in 2016, the missteps identified in the report could have been prevented. And so, you know, uh, in that in that sense, the FBI is saying, we see the report, but we have done a lot to already correct for this before the report even came out. Durham is saying here that had the investigators lived up to the norms of the FBI from the start, these mistakes wouldn't have happened. You know, I, I want to just go uh, very quickly because we do have a, a sound bite from the time from Bill Barr uh, talking about this. Can, can we play that sound? And then I, I want to ask you a couple of questions around that. So, Attorney General, do you feel any way responsible for how this Durham situations unfolding, and are you disappointed in John Durham? No, I'm very proud of uh, John Durham, and I, I do take responsibility for his appointment, and I think he and his team did a, an exceptionally able job both digging out very important facts and presenting a compelling case to the jury. Uh, and the fact that uh, he, well, while he did not succeed in getting a conviction from the D.C. jury, I think he accomplished something far more important, which is he uh, brought out the truth in two important areas. Uh, first, I think he crystallized uh, the central role played by the Hillary campaign in launching as a dirty trick the whole Russiagate uh, collusion narrative. And, and, and fanning the flames of it. Uh, and second, I think he exposed uh, really dreadful behavior by the supervisors in the FBI, the senior ranks of the FBI. We also have some sound from Jamie Raskin. Um, Robert, I want you to, to hold any thoughts. Let's, let's sure. hear this and then we can contextualize the sound. After four years, and millions of dollars spent, the Durham investigation closed as a total flop without unearthing anything like the deep state conspiracy that Republicans have been denouncing around here for years. It couldn't find anything of substance to it. Yet Barr and Durham kept pressing in clearly abusive ways. I hope your subcommittee will investigate. First question, Robert, how will these age uh, from this moment forward and also I mean, what do you make, politically speaking? We're talking about, you know, the, the, the front runner right now in the GOP race for president, uh, former President Donald Trump. One of the words that we've heard through and through since he started campaigigning in 2016 is this concept of, of, of witchcraft of, of a witch hunt. Um, how do you see this playing out? And, and tell me about what you're hearing between the lines in these uh, older sound bites. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, the, those mentioned in this, in this report, particularly the targets of the investigation that the special counsel John Durham says was not properly predicated, will claim victory here. You know, they will say that that um, the investigations into them were not properly predicated, not properly open. And so that is something that we should look forward to. Um, look, you know, we should look we should expect. I will say that um, uh, 
uh, Jim Jordan, who's the chair of the House Judiciary Committee, has already tweeted that he they have asked John Durham to testify before their committee. So I think we should expect Republicans to kind of seize on this. And so looking forward, um, this this might play into um, you know their investigations into the FBI. Um, and as a, as for the second sound, but you know this was a four year investigation. This did take a lot of time, um, and there were um, only three prosecutions brought. Now a Two of them uh, were uh, ended in acquittals, and uh, one of them ended in a plea deal. And so I think that's also important to recognize is that this is a, a special counsel investigation. Special counsels have prosecutorial power. What John Durham did, he only charged three people in this entire sprawling um, investigation. He only found that three were criminally – could be criminally charged for things. And, and um, just a reminder for our audience, at least some of those were false statements to the FBI – not even relevant to the investigation, but more around how they got that information, what their what their thoughts on the information were. So it was not um, a lot of the crimes that were alleged as an investigation were not necessarily material to the report itself. And so um, I think you know I, I'm not really a political reporter covering the Justice Department, but I can see uh, both you know into the future, which both sides will kind of seize on both the pros and cons of this report and the investigation as a whole. Because we have a 300-page report and an investigation that led to three, that led to three prosecutions and only one uh, conviction on a plea deal. So, you know, uh, there's there's enough there for everybody in the political sphere to uh, to grapple with and to seize upon. To take apart. Do, I mean, should people conclude that that Russia probe should not have happened in the in the first place? I mean, what is if you can take us back for those uh, who are joining us right now? Uh, what does this report conclude? What do you see as those key elements that, you know, will, will serve both the FBI moving forward and, of course, the FBI, as you mentioned, too, has issued statements saying we have uh, taken corrective measures. And, and I might be misquoting the FBI there because I don't have the statement in front of me at this moment. But uh, what, what should we take away from this conclusion before the headlines uh, for each side are crafted and spewed out into the Ethernet? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, um, just plainly that special counsel John Durham's uh, concluded, which a lot of us expected, which is that the FBI's investigation into Crossfire Hurricane, which, excuse me, the FBI's investigation into uh, the Trump campaign uh, was not properly predicated based on the evidence that they had at the time. And so he's basically saying that based on, um, uh, you know, uh, information that was not properly vetted, it was then carried out in an improper manner. And he says that some FBI officials might have had a predisposition or at least a tendency um, to to have a bias against the former president. Um, and so um, none of these people have been criminally charged. I think that's important to note as well. Um, but but here we are, um, you know, how many years later uh, from the start of this investigation? Um, and, and we're still kind of grappling with it, now, its consequences. One of the big questions that I think people will have is, does the report from what you've seen state at any point kind of a, a difference in the way uh, then-candidate Hillary Clinton was handled versus the way then-candidate Donald Trump was, was handled uh, by the FBI? Yes, yeah, so there is a bit of a difference there. Um, you know, so... Um, there is one part of this investigation where they basically say, you know, there is a um, – they received information um, from a source allegedly saying that um, there was some connection between Trump and Russia. And to quote the report from John Durham, on a Sunday, within three days, they opened up this investigation. Um, now, you know, then they compare that to how different uh, report, different investigations were handled um, in a more measured way um, and says that the standards were not upheld in that same way. Now, I think, you know, it's confusing because we're talking about uh, a series of different investigations. You know, we've mentioned the Mueller report. Can you walk us through exactly what Crossfire Hurricane was and, and perhaps sure. a bit of a timeline of what started what leading up to this point in time? Sure. So uh, Crossfire Hurricane was an investigation opened in 2016 by um, um, uh, the FBI looking into the Trump campaign. It started, according to Durham's report, based on and and CBS News reporting and the Office of the Inspector General report, um, based on um, a, a information from a source um, in Australia saying that then Trump, um, then Trump advisor, if you will, George Papadopoulos had told 
um, investigators, foreign investigators, um, that there is, uh, you know, a Trump, uh, that there, there was some level of coordination there between Russia and um, Russia and the Trump campaign. Now, the uh, Australian sources told the FBI that this was, they were not sure if this was accurate. They did not, sh- they were not, they did not evaluate it. And then, according to the report, other FBI officials called it thin. Um, but still, they took that information and, according to the report, opened Crossfire Hurricane. Now, Crossfire Hurricane um, was, um, you know, a broad investigation into potential uh, connections between the Trump campaign and Russia. It's a lot more nuanced than that, um, but that's kind of how we can we can put it right now. Um, what then happened um, was, I think, um, investigation. I think your viewers remember investigations into George Papadopoulos, um, Carter Page. Um, and uh, Paul Manafort. Uh, now, Paul Manafort was former uh, President Trump's uh, campaign manager at the time. He was charged and ultimately uh, convicted under the Mueller investigation. But leaving that aside for a second, Crossfire Hurricane then um, was became um, the Mueller investigation um, after the special counsel was appointed. And so this was kind of this is evaluating the origins of uh, the Trump Russia investigation. Okay, we are. Thank you so much, Robert, for breaking all of this down. Uh, We are about to bring in CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian to discuss this uh, breaking news, uh, the U.S. special uh, counsel that was appointed to investigate the way that the FBI uh, launched and and, and, uh, took care of the investigation into former President uh, Donald Trump's, uh, or the investigation that the FBI was uh, launching on former President Donald Trump may or may not have uh, been faulty. So we're going over, we have uh, reporting uh, on, on these 306 pages that conclude that the handling of that 2016 uh, probe was not up to par uh, by FBI, stand, uh, FBI standards. So, Nicole, tell me, what are you learning about the report so far? Have you been able to, to just comb through it? And uh, what are the big headlines here? Well, again, to credit Rob's reporting here, uh, as he has gone through a good section of uh, this report, you know, basically it shows and reveals uh, that uh, the FBI and those investigators who were involved in investigating the origins of the uh, Trump-Russia investigation, that uh, perhaps they didn't handle it in the best way possible, and that there were instances uh, where there were many missteps uh, by the FBI. And so this is, these are the findings, of course, of this special counsel uh, in this report. And some of the missteps, for instance, uh, you know, in one instance, uh, there was uh, an incident uh, cited, for instance, where Hillary Clinton, who, of course, was running at the time in 2016, where her team was briefed, for instance, uh, when there was concern about uh, potential interference by a foreign actor, whereas the Trump campaign did not get a briefing like that. So uh, that is just one example uh, that was cited in this report. Uh, But it is of concern. I mean, certainly many Republicans uh, have expressed concern over the years uh, about uh, the FBI's role in this particular investigation. And we just learned a short time ago from uh, Chairman Jim Jordan, who chairs the Judiciary Committee. He has said uh, via a tweet that he intends to call the special counsel in uh, as soon as next week. Uh, Of course, uh, many Democrats had also expressed concern about this probe uh, because it didn't necessarily result in a lot of uh, convictions. Uh, And so from Democrats' standpoint, this was an investigation that, in their view, uh, was more of a partisan issue, uh, if you will, and one where they felt it wasn't yielding a lot of results so much so that some wanted this investigation shut down. You know, we are hearing that the FBI has already issued a statement. What what are the repercussions, if any, of, of this uh, report that we're learning of today? I understand that the FBI says, you know, we have taken uh, already certain actions to prevent this from happening in the future or something along those lines, uh, but looking back in time. But does this change anything moving forward? for the FBI, its practices, its credibility? 
Well, in that statement that you cited, uh, you know, the uh, FBI and DOJ point out that a number of corrective actions and steps have been taken, but again, uh, will that be enough to satisfy uh, lawmakers here on Capitol Hill? As you know, for instance, there is a select committee on the weaponization of government that's in the Republican-controlled House, which is calling uh, three FBI whistleblowers uh, to testify before their panel, I believe, later this week. Uh, uh, related, but uh, that being said, I say all that to say, you know, there is a lot of scrutiny uh, with respect to uh, the FBI and a lot of mistrust, certainly on the part of Republicans and conservatives. So that is something that has been high on their agenda in this particular Congress in terms of calling uh, attention to what they feel have been other uh, missteps uh, by the agency. So this is only likely to kind of fuel uh, those tensions, uh, fuel this partisan divide. Uh, particularly on this issue uh, here on Capitol Hill. I mean, and how do you see this playing out? And we, you know, we're coming off of a, the Trump indictment, which a lot of people thought that was going to be something that would perhaps hurt him politically. And it did the exact opposite. Even the people who had been uh, walking away from former President Donald Trump started uh, supporting him over the last several weeks and months, uh, calling out what, you know, they call the, the, the justice system basically uh, doing these, these witch hunts against the former president. What implications do you see this conclusion, this report, these 300 pages of meaning to the Trump campaign in 2024? Oh. Well, you know, as we have heard from the former president a time and again, any time there has been an investigation into him, he often calls it a witch hunt. And so I think uh, he is likely to seize on a report like this to once again show and uh, say and claim that, uh, you know, this also is yet again more proof that there was this witch hunt out to get him, you know, with ref respect to Russia and this investigation into potential collusion that was conducted by the previous special counsel, Robert Mueller, you know, the former president has claimed that he was exonerated by uh, that uh, report. And while certainly he wasn't fully uh, exonerated, you know, it was something that he seized on. Obviously, we have seen here on Capitol Hill uh, not just one, but two impeachment trials against the former president, one of them related uh, to, uh, you know, his call with the Ukrainian president and kind of delved into uh, the Russia investigation with that first impeachment trial. But again, uh, the president uh, was not, uh, while he was impeached, he was not necessarily uh, convicted here on the Senate side. So that being said, you know, every time he has been cleared, if you will, it is something that he has seized upon uh, as proof that, you know, the other side is out to get me, the radical left is out to get me, and so I would imagine uh, similarly with this kind of report and these findings, uh, he and his campaign may seize on it again. And of course there are other special counsel investigations taking place right now, there are other cases. I mean that, that Georgia case seemed to be the one that so many pundits say, you know, we're looking at, at something that could have serious impacts for his campaign. Uh, is what I'm hearing from you they may all be irrelevant, politically speaking, at this point. Well, I wouldn't say that, but what I would say is, and obviously, you know, it's apples and, and oranges comparison here, but certainly the former president still faces a number of very critical investigations. One of those, as you mentioned, being that investigation into alleged election interference in Fulton County, Georgia. And we know there that the district attorney has already indicated that she is likely to announce her decision regarding that case and whether or not there will be indictments as sometime this summer. And many speculate that that is certainly a possibility. Uh, of course, we also have the special investigation Investigation, a special counsel investigation, rather, into the classified documents uh, that were taken uh, to the former president's of Florida home. So he still remains under investigation for that, as well as his role in January 6, which was already litigated here uh, on Capitol Hill, but also is now uh, under investigation by the Department of Justice. So uh, by no means does this uh, make the former president uh, immune, if you will, but uh, certainly we know that the former 
president has faced a number of investigations. And again, you know, this was one of the uh, original ones, of course, uh, stemming uh, from when the former president first ran for president uh, back in 2016. And again, I think it's just something that, at least for now, uh, could be a, a small victory for the former president in terms of uh, feeling like his name has been cleared yet again, even as these other investigations continue. Now, just to recap a little bit, I mean, what is the FBI being basically uh, accused of in this report? Uh, what should we all walk away with? And are there going to be consequences for anybody within the agency, uh, past or present? Well, as of now, again, the FBI has made clear that it has taken a number of reforms and some of those investigators who uh, were involved uh, in this original investigation, you know, didn't necessarily face huge penalties or jail time. Some did face uh, some repercussions. But uh, that being said, uh, you know, the concern here, again, is, and again, this is more so on the part of uh, many congressional Republicans, is how this investigation was conducted into the former president at the time when he was first running for office, and there were these concerns about potential uh, Russian influence uh, in his campaign. And so uh, from that standpoint, uh, again, it appears, based on the findings of special counsel Durham, uh, that the FBI did make some missteps. And for, from that perspective, that is something that I think you are going to see congressional Republicans potentially uh, want to investigate further. And on that, Nicole, I, I just want to read the FBI's statements uh, to this report. The FBI states, the conduct in 2016 and 2017 that special counsel Durham examined was the reason that current FBI leadership already implemented dozens of corrective actions, which have now been in place for some time. Uh, Nicole, what do you take uh, from this statement from the FBI? What is the FBI saying? Well, again, I think they are defending their handling of this probe. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, this was a probe to investigate the investigators, right? So from that standpoint, uh, it is a sensitive matter as far as the FBI is concerned, as far as the Department of Justice is concerned. And I think that is why they have been quick to point out that, look, we have taken a number of steps since this investigation and had they been implemented or in effect at the time that this uh, original probe was underway that we may not have seen uh, some of the things occur that uh, the special counsel has cited. Nicole Killian, thank you so much for uh, breaking all of that down for us. Appreciate you and Robert Legare, too, who joined us early.